Benedetta Bertin. I'm the head of policy planning at NATO. I work in the office of the Secretary General. Right, so NATO's allies adopted a new strategic concept, which is a guiding document for the alliance just a few months ago. And that document says very clearly that we see climate change as a defining challenge over time. We see it as a threat and climate a multiplier, so affecting our neighborhood, but also affecting directly our own security at home and potentially affecting the livelihood of our citizens and their security. So we're looking at climate change through this complex lens and seeing really how it affects everything the Alliance do, from uh, fragility in the neighborhood to security and stability in the Euro-Atlantic area, but it also affects the way our armed forces operate because our armed forces need to operate in more difficult weather conditions and they're more and more called upon to support civilian preparedness efforts to respond to climate related extreme weather events. So really it's all encompassing. NATO has adopted a climate change and security uh, agenda a couple of years ago, and now we're implementing that. And that agenda tells us that we really are focusing on four main areas. First, awareness. We want to really increase our collective IQ in terms of understanding how climate change affects everything we do, our militaries uh, and also our societies. So first of all, more awareness. Second, more adaptation. And here we're working uh, on how to really mainstream and integrate climate change considerations into everything we do from our planning to our exercises, to our training, thinking through our procurement, thinking through our, thinking through our weapons acquisition. So really broad, range of functions in terms of adaptation and then of course also investing more in science technology and innovation to develop green technologies so that we can increase our operational effectiveness but also uh, contribute to mitigating climate change and lessening our dependencies on fossil fuels which leads me to my third point we're working more on mitigation so what can we do as an alliance to diminish and lessen our carbon footprint. And here we have established a goal of reaching 46% reduction in terms of emissions made by NATO entities and bodies by 2030, with the goal of uh, contributing to reaching net zero. And that's just one element of the agenda. And finally, we're working on cooperation. So really working with our partners, with other international organizations, because we understand that we, can, we are part of the answer, but we need to work with others. This is a global challenge. So I would say that, first of all, once the alliance uh, becomes an alliance of 30, 32 countries with Finland and Sweden, we are very excited about a number of policy issues uh, that these countries will bring with them and along with it, the expertise, the toolkit. And we certainly feel that uh, Sweden has played a trailblazing role when it comes to climate and security and climate security agenda in general. So it will be really interesting to see that expertise, those best practices, that knowledge uh, also in the context of NATO. So that's that's really uh, something that we're very much looking forward to. Then institutions like Serpia, of course, have been very much at the center of that that research and that dissemination and that advocacy. And we are very much looking forward to strengthening our ties with civil society, with NGOs, with academia, because we understand that we really need to thicken our knowledge on climate change and security. So we're looking forward to collaborating.